Flynn effect. The Flynn effect is the substantial and long-sustained increase in both fluid and crystallized intelligence death scores that was measured in many parts of the world over the 20th century. When intelligence quotient, IQ, tests are initially standardized using a sample of test takers, by convention the average of the test results is set to 100 and their standard deviation is set to 15 or 16 IQ points. When IQ tests are revised, they are again standardized using a new sample of test takers, usually born more recently than the first dot again, the average result is set to 100. However, when the new test subjects take the older tests, in almost every case their average scores are significantly above 100. Test score increases have been continuous and approximately linear from the earliest years of testing to the present. For the Raven's Progressive Matrices Test, a study published in the year 2009 found that British children's average scores rose by 14 IQ points from 1942 to 2008. Similar gains have been observed in many other countries in which IQ testing has long been widely used, including other Western European countries, Japan, and South Korea. There are numerous proposed explanations of the Flynn effect, as well as some skepticism about its implications. Similar improvements have been reported for other cognition to a semantic and episodic memory. Research suggests that there is an ongoing reversed Flynn effect, i.e. a decline in IQ scores, in Norway, Denmark, Australia, Britain, the Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, France and German-speaking countries, a development which appears to have started in the 1990s. The Flynn effect is named for James R. Flynn, who did much to document it and promote awareness of its implications. The term itself was coined by Richard Herrnstein and Charles Murray, authors of The Bell Curve. Although the general term for the phenomenon, referring to no researcher in particular, continues to be secular rise in IQ scores, many textbooks on psychology and IQ testing have now followed the lead of Herrnstein and Murray in calling the phenomenon the Flynn effect. IQ tests are updated periodically. For example, the Wexler Intelligence Scale for Children, Wisconsin, originally developed in 1949, was updated in 1974, in 1991, 2003 and again in 2014. The revised versions are standardized based on the performance of test takers and standardization samples. A standard score of IQ 100 is defined as the median performance of the standardization sample. Thus one way to see changes in norms over time is to conduct a study in which the same test takers take both an old and new version of the same test. Doing so confirms IQ gains over time. Some IQ tests, for example tests used for military draftees in NATO countries in Europe, report raw scores, and those also confirm a trend of rising scores over time. The average rate of increase seems to be about 3 IQ points per decade in the United States, as scaled by the Wechsler tests. The increasing test performance over time appears on every major test, in every age range, at every ability level, and in every modern industrialized country, although not necessarily at the same rate as in the United States. The increase was continuous and roughly linear from the earliest days of testing to the mid-1990s. Though the effect is most associated with IQ increases, a similar effect has been found with increases in attention and of semantic and episodic memory. Ulrich Neisser estimated that using the IQ values of 1997, the average IQ of the United States in 1932, according to the first Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale standardization sample, was 80. Neisser states that hardly any of them would have scored very superior, but nearly one quarter would have appeared to be deficient. He also wrote that test scores are certainly going up all over the world, but whether intelligence itself has risen remains controversial. Trey and et al. 2014, found that the effect was about 2.93 points per decade, based on both Stanford Binet and Wexler tests, they also found no evidence the effect was diminishing. In contrast, Pietschenig and Vorasek, 2015, reported, in their meta-analysis of studies involving nearly 4 million participants, that the Flynn effect had decreased in recent decades. They also reported that the magnitude of the effect was different for different types of intelligence, 0.41, 0.30, 0.28, and 0.21 IQ points annually for fluid, spatial, full-scale, and crystallized IQ test performance, respectively, and that the effect was stronger for adults than for children. Raven, 2000, found that, as Flynn suggested, data interpreted as showing a decrease in many abilities with increasing age must be reinterpreted as showing that there has been a dramatic increase of these abilities with date of birth. On many tests this occurs at all levels of ability. 
Some studies have found the gains of the Flynn effect to be particularly concentrated at the lower end of the distribution. Teasdale and Owen, 1989, for example, found the effect primarily reduced the number of low-end scores, resulting in an increased number of moderately high scores, with no increase in very high scores. In another study, two large samples of Spanish children were assessed with a 30-year gap. Comparison of the IQ distributions indicated that the mean IQ scores on the test had increased by 9.7 points, the Flynn effect, the gains were concentrated in the lower half of the distribution and negligible in the top half, and the gains gradually decreased as IQ of the individuals increased. Some studies have found a reverse Flynn effect with declining scores for those with high IQ. In 1987, Flynn took the position that the very large increase indicates that IQ tests do not measure intelligence but only a minor sort of abstract problem-solving ability with little practical significance. He argued that if IQ gains do reflect intelligence increases, there would have been consequent changes of our society that have not been observed, a presumed non-occurrence of a cultural renaissance. Flynn no longer endorses this view of intelligence and has since elaborated and refined his view of what rising IQ scores mean. Earlier investigators had discovered rises in raw IQ test scores in some study populations, but had not published general investigations of that issue in particular. Historian Daniel C. Calhoun cited earlier psychology literature on IQ score trends in his book The Intelligence of a People, 1973. R. L. Thorndike drew attention to rises in Stanford Binet scores in a 1975 review of the history of intelligence testing. There is debate about whether the rise in IQ scores also corresponds to a rise in general intelligence, or only a rise in special skills related to taking IQ tests. Because children attend school longer now and have become much more familiar with the testing of school related material, one might expect the greatest gains to occur on such school content related tests as vocabulary, arithmetic, or general information. Just the opposite is the case, abilities such as these have experienced relatively small gains and even occasional decreases over the years. Meta-analytic findings indicate that Flynn effects occur for tests assessing both fluid and crystallized abilities. For example, Dutch conscripts gained 21 points during only 30 years, or 7 points per decade, between 1952 and 1982. But this rise in IQ test scores is not wholly explained by an increase in general intelligence. Studies have shown that while test scores have improved over time, the improvement is not fully correlated with latent factors related to intelligence. Rushton has shown that the gains in IQ over time, the Lin Flynn effect, are unrelated to G. Other researchers have shown that the IQ gains described by the Flynn effect are due in part to increasing intelligence, and in part to increases in test specific skills. In parallel with the measured gains in IQ scores, secular declines have been found for mental speed digit span backwards, the use of difficult words, and color acuity, all of which are related to intelligence. A 2017 survey of 75 experts in the field of intelligence research suggested four key causes of the Flynn effect, better health, better nutrition, more and better education, and rising standards of living. Genetic changes were seen as not important. The experts' views agreed with an independently performed meta-analysis on published Flynn effect data except that the latter found life history speed to be the most important factor. The expert survey explained the possible end or decline in the Flynn effect by asymmetric fertility by means of genetic effects, migration, asymmetric fertility by means of socialization effects, declines in education, and the influence of media. Duration of average schooling has increased steadily. One problem with this explanation is that if in the U.S. comparing older and more recent subjects with similar educational levels, then the IQ gains appear almost undiminished in each such group considered individually. Many studies find that children who do not attend school score drastically lower on the tests than their regularly attending peers. During the 1960s, when some Virginia counties closed their public schools to avoid racial integration, compensatory private schooling was available only for Caucasian children. On average, the scores of African-American children who received no formal education during that period decreased at a rate of about 6 IQ points per year. Another explanation is an increased familiarity of the general population with tests and testing. For example, children who take the very same IQ test a second time usually gain 5 or 6 points. However, this seems to set an upper limit on the effects of test sophistication. One problem with this explanation and others related to schooling is that in views, the groups with greater test familiarity show smaller IQ increases.
Yes, early intervention programs have shown mixed results. Some preschool, ages 3 to 4, intervention programs like Head Start do not produce lasting changes of IQ, although they may confer other benefits. The Abecedary and Early Intervention Project, an all-day program that provided various forms of environmental enrichment to children from infancy onward, showed IQ gains that did not diminish over time. The IQ difference between the groups, although only 5 points, was still present at age 12. Not all such projects have been successful. Also, such IQ gains can diminish until age 18. Citing a high correlation between rising literacy rates and gains in IQ, David Marks has argued that the Flynn effect is caused by changes in literacy rates. Still another theory is that the general environment today is much more complex and stimulating. One of the most striking 20th century changes of the human intellectual environment has come from the increase of exposure to many types of visual media. From pictures on the wall to movies to television to video games to computers, each successive generation has been exposed to richer optical displays than the one before and may have become more adept at visual analysis. This would explain why visual tests like the Ravens have shown the greatest increases. An increase only of particular forms of intelligence would explain why the Flynn effect has not caused a cultural renaissance too great to be overlooked. In 2001, Dickens and Flynn presented a model for resolving several contradictory findings regarding IQ. They argue that the measure heritability includes both a direct effect off the genotype on IQ and also indirect effects such that the genotype changes the environment, thereby affecting IQ. That is, those with a greater IQ tend to seek stimulating environments that further increase IQ. These reciprocal effects result in gene-environment correlation. The direct effect could initially have been very small, but feedback can create large differences of IQ. In their model, an environmental stimulus can have a very great effect on IQ, even for adults, but this effect also decays over time unless the stimulus continues. The model could be adapted to include possible factors, like nutrition during early childhood, that may cause permanent effects. The Flynn effect can be explained by a generally more stimulating environment for all people. The authors suggest that any program designed to increase IQ may produce long-term gains if that program teaches children how to replicate the types of cognitively demanding experiences that produce IQ gains outside the program. To maximize lifetime IQ, the programs should also motivate them to continue searching for cognitively demanding experiences after they have left the program. Flynn in his 2007 book What is Intelligence? Further expanded on this theory. Environmental changes resulting from modernization, such as more intellectually demanding work, greater use of technology and smaller families, have meant that a much larger proportion of people are more accustomed to manipulating abstract concepts such as hypotheses and categories than a century ago. Substantial portions of IQ tests deal with these abilities. Flynn gives, as an example, the question what do a dog and a rabbit have in common? A modern respondent might say they are both mammals, and abstract, or a priori answer, which depends only on the meanings of the words dog and rabbit, whereas someone a century ago might have said that humans catch rabbits with dogs, a concrete, or a posteriori answer, which depended on what happened to be the cat's eat that time. Improved nutrition is another possible explanation. Today's average adult from an industrialized nation is taller than a comparable adult of a century ago. That increase of stature, likely the result of general improvements of nutrition and health, has been at a rate of more than a centimeter per decade. Available data suggests that these gains have been accompanied by analogous increases of head size, and by an increase in the average size of the brain. This argument had been thought to suffer the difficulty that groups who tend to be of smaller overall body size, for example women, or people of Asian ancestry, do not have lower averages. Richard Lynn, however, claims that while people of East Asian origin may often have smaller bodies, they tend to have larger brains and higher IQs than average whites. A 2005 study presented data supporting the nutrition hypothesis, which predicts that gains will occur predominantly at the low end of the IQ distribution, where nutritional deprivation is probably most severe. An alternative interpretation of skewed IQ gains could be that improved education has been particularly important for this group. Richard Lynn makes the case for nutrition, arguing that cultural factors cannot typically explain the Flynn effect because its gains are observed even at infant and preschool levels, with rates of IQ test score increase about equal to those of school students and adults. Lynn states that this rules out improvements in education, greater test sophistication, etc. and most of the other factors that have been proposed to explain the Flynn effect. 
He proposes that the most probable factor has been improvements in prenatal and early postnatal nutrition. A century ago, nutritional deficiencies may have limited body and organ functionality, including skull volume. The first two years of life is a critical time for nutrition. The consequences of malnutrition can be irreversible and may include poor cognitive development, educability, and future economic productivity. On the other hand, Flynn has pointed to 20 point gains on Dutch military, Ravens type, IQ tests between 1952, 1962, 1972, and 1982. He observed that the Dutch 18 year olds off 1962 had a major nutritional handicap. They were either in the womb, or were recently born, during the Great Dutch Famine of 1944, when German troops monopolized food and 18,000 people died of starvation. Yet, concludes Flynn, they do not show up even as a blip in the pattern of Dutch IQ gains. It is as if the famine had never occurred. It appears that the effects of diet are gradual, taking effect over decades, affecting mother as well as child, rather than a few months. In support of the nutritional hypothesis, it is known that, in the United States, the average height before 1900 was about 10 centimeters, 4 inches, shorter than it is today. Possibly related to the Flynn effect is a similar change of skull size and shape during the last 150 years. Though the idea that brain size is unrelated to race and intelligence was popularized in the 1980s, studies continue to show significant correlations. A Norwegian study found that height gains were strongly correlated with intelligence gains until the cessation of height gains in military conscript cohorts towards the end of 1980s. Ref name equals doi 10.1016 j.intel.2004.06.004 slash ref both height and skull size increases probably result from a combination of phenotypic plasticity and genetic selection over this period. With only five or six human generations in 150 years, time for natural selection has been very limited, suggesting that increased skeletal size resulting from changes in population phenotypes is more likely than recent genetic evolution. It is well known that micronutrient deficiencies change the development of intelligence. For instance, one study has found that iodine deficiency causes a fall, on average, of 12 IQ points in China. Scientists James Ferrer, Dimitra Politi, and David N. Weil have found in the U.S. that the proliferation of iodized salt increased IQ by 15 points in some areas. Journalist Max Neeson has stated that, with this type of salt becoming popular, that the aggregate effect has been extremely positive. Daily et al. 2003, found a significant Flynn effect among children in rural Kenya and concluded that nutrition was one of the hypothesized explanations that best explained the results, the others were parental literacy and family structure. Epic, Fincher, and Thornhill, 2009, argue that from an energetic standpoint, a developing human will have difficulty building a brain and fighting off infectious diseases at the same time, as both are very metabolically costly tasks and that the Flynn effect may be caused in part by the decrease in the intensity of infectious diseases as nations develop. They suggest that improvements in gross domestic product, GDP, education, literacy, and nutrition may have an effect on IQ mainly through reducing the intensity of infectious diseases. Epic, Fincher, and Thornhill, 2011, in a similar study instead looking at different U.S. states found that states with a higher prevalence of infectious diseases had lower average IQ. The effect remained after controlling for the effects of wealth and educational variation. Athi under Venkat Aramani. 2010, studied the effect of malaria on IQ in a sample of Mexicans. Exposure during the birth year to malaria eradication was associated with increases in IQ. It also increased the probability of employment in a skilled occupation. The author suggests that this may be one explanation for the Flynn effect and that this may be an important explanation for the link between national malaria burden and economic development. A literature review of 44 papers states that cognitive abilities and school performance were a shown to be impaired in subgroups of patients, with either cerebral malaria or uncomplicated malaria, when compared with healthy controls. Studies comparing cognitive functions before and after treatment for acute malarial illness continued to show significantly impaired school performance and cognitive ability as seven after recovery. Malaria prophylaxis was shown to improve cognitive function and school performance in clinical trials when compared to placebo groups. Heterosis, or hybrid vigor associated with historical reductions of the levels of inbreeding, has been proposed by Michael Mingroni as an alternative explanation of the Flynn effect. However, James Flynn has pointed out that even if everyone mated with a sibling in 1900, 
subsequent increases in heterosis would not be a sufficient explanation of the observed gain. John Martin Sundet and colleagues, 2004, examined scores on intelligence tests given to Norwegian conscripts between the 1950s and 2002s. They found that the increase of scores of general intelligence stopped after the mid-1990s and declined in numerical reasoning subtests. T. Stale and Owen, 2005, examined the results of IQ tests given to Danish male conscripts. Between 1959 and 1979 the gains were 3 points per decade. Between 1979 and 1989 the increase approached 2 IQ points. Between 1989 and 1998 the gain was about 1.3 points. Between 1998 and 2004 IQ declined by about the same amount as it gained between 1989 and 1998. They speculate that a contributing factor in this recent fall could be a simultaneous decline in proportions of students entering three-year advanced level school programs for 16-18 year olds. The same authors in a more comprehensive 2008 study, again on Danish male conscripts, found that there was a 1.5 point increase between 1988 and 1998, but a 1.5 point decrease between 1998 and 2003-2004. A possible contributing factor to the more recent decline may be changes in the Danish educational system. Another may be the rising proportion of immigrants or their immediate descendants in Denmark. This is supported by data on Danish draftees where first or second generation immigrants with Danish nationality score below average. In Australia, the IQ of 6 to 11 year olds as measured by the coloured progressive matrices has shown no increase from 1975 to 2003. In the United Kingdom, a study by Flynn, 2009, found that tests carried out in 1980 and again in 2008 show that the IQ score of an average 14-year-old dropped by more than two points over the period. For the upper half of the results the performance was even worse. Average IQ scores declined by six points. However, children aged between 5 and 10 saw their IQs increase by up to half a point a year over the three decades. Flynn argues that the abnormal drop in British teenage IQ could be due to youth culture having stagnated or even dumbed down. He also states that the youth culture is more oriented towards computer games than towards reading and holding conversations. Researcher Richard Gray, commenting on the study, also mentions the computer culture diminishing reading books as well as a tendency towards teaching to the test. Lynn and Harvey argued in 2008 that the causes of the above are difficult to interpret since these countries had had significant recent immigration from countries with lower aboriginal IQs. Nevertheless, they expect that similar patterns will occur, or have occurred, first in other developed nations and then in the developing world as there is a limit to how much environmental factors can improve intelligence. Furthermore, during the last century there is a negative correlation between fertility and intelligence although there is not yet any conclusive evidence of the association between the two. They estimate that there has been a dysgenic decline in the world's genotypic IQ, masked by the Flynn effect for the phenotype, of 0.86 IQ points per decade for the years 1950-2000. to Bradsberg and Rosberg, 2018 Present evidence that the Flynn effect in Norway has reversed, and that both the original rise in mean IQ scores and their subsequent decline were caused by environmental factors. If the Flynn effect has ended in developed nations, then this may possibly allow national differences in IQ scores to diminish if the Flynn effect continues in nations with lower average national IQs. Also, if the Flynn effect has ended for the majority in developed nations, it may still continue for minorities, especially for groups like immigrants where many may have received poor nutrition during early childhood or have had other disadvantages. A study in the Netherlands found that children of non-Western immigrants had improvements for G, educational achievements, and work proficiency compared to their parents, although there were still remaining differences compared to ethnic Dutch. There is a controversy as to whether the U.S. racial gap in IQ scores is diminishing. If that is the case then this may or may not be related to the Flynn effect. Flynn has commented that he never claimed that the Flynn effect has the same causes as the black-white gap, but that it shows that environmental factors can create IQ differences off a magnitude similar to the gap. Research that has examined whether G-factor and IQ gains from the Flynn effect are related have found there is a negative correlation between the two which may indicate that group differences in the Flynn effect are possibly due to differing causes. The Flynn effect has also been part of the discussions regarding Spearman's hypothesis, which states that differences in the G-factor are the major source of differences between blacks and whites observed in many studies of race and intelligence. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.